So I want to show you how you can take a high definition Final Cut Pro project and compress that for the web. And we're going to use the H.264 codec uh, to compress this. And you can actually use that to upload to YouTube or post on a website. But the nice thing about the settings I'm going to show you is that you can also use this to upload this to a, an iPhone or an iPod that has video support. So uh, I'm going to show you this in Final Cut Pro. But in a second here, I'm going to show you how you can access these same settings using a program like After Effects. So I'm going to start out here in Final Cut Pro, and you can see here in my timeline, I've got a few seconds of HD video. Even though I'm using this as an example, just to keep it simple, this whole, all these settings will work with a longer, larger video project. So I'm going to select my sequence here in the browser and make that active. And when it's highlighted, I'm telling Final Cut that this is the clip, this is the footage that I want to export. So all I have to do is come up to the File menu and say File, Export, using QuickTime Conversion. And that brings up my File Save dialog box. I'm going to call this Web Video and show the extension there so I can see what format I've got here. I'm just saving it to my desktop for this example. But down here where it says format, instead of QuickTime Movie, I want to pull that down so that it says MPEG-4. Uh, H.264 is a variation on the MPEG-4 codec. So now when I come over here and I click on Options, uh, I can set my MPEG-4 export settings. So basically from here on out, I've turned over control to the uh, QuickTime MPEG-4 exporter. Now I'm just going to cancel on this for a second so I can show you that this is the exact same setup that you can do in another program such as After Effects. So if I switch over to After Effects, you can see I've got the same footage lined up here in my After Effects project. And if I want to export this project, I'm going to go through the same process. I would highlight the composition that I want to export, come up here and say File, Export. And then when I choose MPEG-4 in After Effects, uh, it's giving me this warning session that you're about to use QuickTime. Apparently that makes Adobe nervous, so they're just warning you there. You can click OK. But what I want you to notice is that I'm now back in this same MPEG-4 export setting. So all of the settings we're about to set, you can do this from After Effects, you can do this from Final Cut, uh, the settings are identical. So back here in Final Cut, if I look here next to Video Format and I pull this down, you can see H.264 is grayed out. The reason that is grayed out is that there's two flavors of MPEG-4. ISMA is the industry standard architecture. If I come up here and choose plain old vanilla MPEG-4, now when I come down to video M uh, format, I can actually see that the H.264 is available. So I'm going to choose it here. And then I'm going to set my data rate. Data rate is very closely tied to the image size. So I happen to know that for the image size that I, I want to set here, uh, a data rate of 700 is, is a good target size. So 700 kilobits per second is going to be good for this. But now next to image size, I'm going to set a custom image size. And the reason for that is, is that I want to maintain the aspect ratio of my HD footage, which is 16 by 9. And basically what I want to do is take that HD footage and make it half the HD resolution. So I'm going to manually type in 640 by 360 and that is the equivalent of a half of a 720p frame there. So 640 by 360 with that resolution and the data rate of 700 kilobits we should have a very uh, high quality setting. Now you could make a larger video if you wanted to but just keep in mind the larger your resolution is the higher your data rate needs to be and you can kind of work out that uh, quality versus file size trade-off there. Uh, the frame rate, I'm going to leave that to 30 frames a second because my footage was shot at 2997, so I'm rounding that up to 30 frames a second. I'm also going to set the keyframe rate to automatic. Now the next thing that we want to do here is get into our video options. So I click on that and it brings up my H.264 video options. I could leave these settings the way they are, but if I want this to play back on an iPod, what I have to do is turn off the main uh, profile and enable the baseline profile. Obviously also for the encoding mode, I want this to be the best quality. So by toggling on this baseline setting here, that's what's going to enable this video to be played back on an iPhone or an iPod. So that's a, a very simple setting. It shouldn't affect anything for the web playback either. 
I click OK on this and now I've set all of my video options. The next thing I'm going to do is switch over to the audio tab and typically I leave these audio settings where they are. AAC is a very good uh, codec for compression, the data rate, stereo and all that. Uh, occasionally I'll switch this down to mono so I don't, uh, if it's playing back on the web, stereo is usually not a big thing but it'll save you a little file space if you switch it down to mono and I always set the encoding quality to best also. So I've set my video, I've set my audio. The streaming is really for a streaming server so if you've got that ability you can do that but most people just upload their files to an FTP site and, and play it off the web that way so uh, streaming is really only if you have a QuickTime enabled streaming server. So uh, with those audio and video settings, with those settings I can click OK and now if I want to export this all I have to do is click on save and Final Cut will go through the rendering process for me and uh, spit out that H.264. So the rendering is done now and I saved the files to my desktop so I just want to have a look at those file sizes. Here is the original HD video clip and if I right click on that and do a get info you can see the file size on this file is roughly 72 megabytes in size. Here is the compressed H.264 video and if I do a get info on this one you can see that the file size here is actually less than one megabyte. So if you look at the file sizes and you compare the original to the H.264 you can see the new H.264 video is actually 1 70th of the file size of the original HD footage and the quality on this is great that the playback is nice and smooth there's no compression artifacts it looks great and so now you can take this video and upload that to your YouTube site or your website or drag and drop it onto your iPhone so you can play it from there